Let's continue to look at this subject of uh, judgment, but this time we are not going to look at the uh, judgment that is taking place in the house of God. As we did last time, we uh, looked at part one of the migration invasion of the papacy, the rapid move that the papacy is making by using this uh, migration movement invasion movement to come up to power and we saw we read that last time that as a result of the breakup of the Roman Empire into ten divisions and as a result of that that gave rise that gave birth to the papacy and so we're gonna continue to look at that and also some other current events let's turn to our Bibles to the book of Revelation chapter 7 Wh which book? Revelation, Revelation chapter 7. In Revelation chapter 7, we'll begin in verse 1. Now keep in mind, Revelation chapter 7 is a pause of Revelation chapter 6, which, which uh, was describing the, uh, the seals there. And there was a pause, which we find in chapter 7, and this pause was given for this reason, as we are about to read here. Verse 1 of uh, chapter 7. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, and what else? Nor on any tree. For what reason? He goes on to say, And I saw another angel ascending from the east. East there is very important. Why from the east? There's an angel. What does an angel mean? A messenger. A messenger. Angelos, yeah. a messenger. So this angel is ascending from the east. What did he say as he is ascending or coming from the east? He has the seal of the, ha uh, of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. So the direction coming from the east always come with uh, good tidings. Just like when the Magi came to worship the newborn king, Jesus, they came from what? Which direction? From the east. And they came with good news. And what was the good news? Where is he who is born king of the Jews? The one that was prophesied 4,000 years ago in the Garden of Eden when men fell into temptation, when men fell into sin. Then now we have this angel ascending up, coming from the east, coming to the uh, four angels who had been giving charge to let go of the winds of strife. That's what the winds they represent, strife, war, commotions, bloodshed. Now he says, the angel says, to hold back the winds because the servants of our Lord are not sealed yet. But this was not just to seal the, the servant of God. This, it was also partly because God's people were not ready to be sealed. God's people still had a work to do. Now we're talking about these uh, winds of strife, these commotions, wars and rumors of wars, chaos and a time of trouble as Daniel 12, 1 pictured it. Like there never was, uh, that will take place as well. Notice with me on the screen. It says here, from Prophets and Kings, page 278. The conditions prevailing in society, and especially in the great cities of the nations, proclaim in thunder, what is it? Tones. Thunder. That the hour of God's judgment is come, and that the end of all things earthly is at hand. We are standing in the threshold of the crisis of the ages. In quick succession, the judgments of God will follow one another. Fire and flood and earthquake with war and bloodshed. 
We are not to be surprised at this time by events both great and decisive, for the angel of mercy cannot remain much longer to shelter the impenitent. That means God is getting ready to allow the four angels to let go of the winds of strife. We are living in a judgment hour. There's wars, commotions, and rumors of wars all around us. Notice, back to the screen. Speaking of wars and commotion, notice this is from Global Research, December 22nd, 2018. The U.S. is planning a what? A major war with Russia and China, report says. Two recent reports from the United States strongly suggest the United States is planning a major war with Russia and China. The first report acknowledges that changes at home and abroad are diminishing U.S. military advantages and that this diminution of these advantages poses a threat to vital United States interests. Acknowledgements of technological def deficiency and strategic disadvantage do not sit comfortably with the image of an all-powerful America willing and able to defeat any threat to its own global interests or those of its allies. Let's pause there for a moment. What did we read from Revelation chapter 13? Will there be a power that can stand or will be able to stand against the United States of America? No. The Bible tells us that it is the United States of America who is going to give life to the image of the beast and cause how many? Oh. The entire world to worship the beast. So what United States is doing right now, understand this. It's the same exact role that Justinian played. Let's go to the Revelation. We'll finish that in a moment. Let's go to Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. This is the reason why there's this urgency in Revelation chapter 7. There's wars and rumors of wars and God wants to end this. But at the same time, His servants are not ready. We'll come back to chapter 7 of the Revelation. But for now, let's look at chapter 13 of the Revelation. Again, United States of America is playing the same role here as Justinian did. We mentioned that. We studied that last time. It was Justinian when he saw that the empire was collapsing, remember, because of the migrants. Then what did he do? He wanted to keep the empire together. He made a political move. He gave, as the Bible says, in verse 2, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon, who was the dragon again? Satan. Primarily, but, but also was papacy. Pa pagan Rome. That was pagan Rome. The, the papacy is the beast there. The, the, the beast that, com that comes up out of the... Uh, water but the dragon there is pagan rome it was pagan rome or justinian more specifically that as we read here it says the dragon gave him his power his seat and great authority it was when pagan rome was going down then papal rome received power then you have a uh, a government now which is a combination of uh, church and state but keep in mind Constantine, according to Revelation chapter 6, go to chapter 6 now. Revelation chapter 6, we'll come back there again uh, as well to chapter 13. According to chapter 6 of the Revelation, when we read about the sixth seal, we saw here in verse, let's begin in uh, verse 6. And uh, well, I'm sorry, verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I, I beheld, and uh, lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And we covered this before. Who is this? Which era is that? Oh, no. Constantine. The black horse and the balances was represented an era of compromise. Okay. You have 
also an era of church and state when uh, Constantine proclaimed to be a Christian, then the Christians who were in hiding from persecution under Diocletian, Emperor Diocletian, now when they heard that the, the emperor had embraced quote-unquote Christianity, then they started coming out of hiding. But then the problem with that was that the emperor combined paganism with Christianity and also combined church and state together. Notice, then the Bible goes on to say, as a result of, of this, if you keep reading down, it give, we don't want to go too much into this. Skip on down to verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was deaf and held, followed with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. And which power is that? Represented by the fourth seal there, or the pale horse there. That is none other than the papacy. You have... Again, black horse, church and state together, gave way to the men of sin. S the same way we had, we studied, we looked at last time, when the empire collapsed, then you have, because of the migration problem, then the papacy, now everyone turned to the papacy, including the migrants. They turned to the papacy now for the spiritual or the moral leader. And as a result, we have uh, persecution. Now back to chapter 13 again. In chapter 13, verse 2 tells us, It was pagan Rome, Justinian, that gave uh, the papacy his seat, his power, and great authority. Now if you look at uh, verse 14 with me, the Bible says, In the United States of America deceived them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak. It is exactly what Justinian did there. To give the papacy his seat and power and great authority. United States of America is playing that same military role there for the papacy, just like Justinian did. Back to the screen. Notice again, two recent reports from the United States strongly suggest the United States is planning a major war with Russia and China. The first report acknowledges that changes at home and abroad are diminishing U.S. military advantages and that this uh, diminution of these uh, advantages poses a threat to vital United States interests. Acknowledgement of technological deficiency and strategic disadvantage do not sit comfortably with the image of an all-powerful America willing and able to defeat any threat to its own global interests or those of its allies. The latter prefer, prefer the comfortable de delusion of an omnipotent I U.S. umbrella. Notice, omnipotent? What does that mean? What does the word omnipotent mean? All-powerful. That's what it means. Notice, history demonstrates that it is unwise to underestimate the extent to which the United States will go to maintain its self-appointed role is the world's dominant, what is it? Hegemon. Hegemon, yes. <laughs> this is almost kind of like quoting what we just read in Revelation chapter 13. There is not going to be another superpower than the United States of America. It is the first beast, the second beast, United States of America, second beast, that will come together and force and cause Worship, But in the meanwhile, as we just read in chapter 7 of the Revelation, the Bible tells us that God is holding back the winds of strife. 
He's holding back the wind of strife for what reason? Well, we'll look at that in a moment. Another article here, notice. It says here, from Yahoo, December 22nd, 2018, Russia warns of global conflict over nuclear pact collapse. So we see, uh, we hear, as Jesus says in Matthew 24, wars and rumors of wars all around us. But notice with me, back to chapter 7 again of the book of Revelation. So the angel is holding back the winds of strife. Which direction again did that other angel come from? The east. The east with a good news of salvation, because good tidings comes from the east. For what reason again? Because the servant of our Lord ha have not been sealed. But why? Notice, back to the screen. Sister White says, from Manuscript 15, 222, point, paragraph 2, judgment and wrath were to be represented only for a little space until a certain work, what is it? A certain work was done. Let's pause. She repressed. It makes oh, I'm sorry. Repress. So. What did I say? Uh, represented. Oh, represented. Let's. Okay. Judgment and wrath were to be repressed only for a little space until a certain work was done. Okay. She was referring to the same chapter there we are dealing with, Revelation chapter seven, when which describe the servant of our Lord must be sealed. She says, here's the reason why the angel was commanded to fly to the four angels to tell them to hold back the winds of strife because there was still some work that needed to be done by us, God's people. Notice, then she goes on to say, the message, the last message of warning and mercy has been, uh, what's the word? Retarded. What does that word mean? Retarded. Slowed down. Slow down. It's not advancing, right? Mm -hmm. Retarded. Why? Notice. The message, the last message of warning, which is the third angel's message, and mercy has been uh, retarded in doing its work by the selfish love of money. money, the selfish love of ease, and the unfitness of men to do a work that needs to be done. Now, the question is, is this talking... To me? Is this talking about me? Is this talking about you? What's the reason why that the servants of our God have not been sealed yet? What's the reason why we are still here in this mess? We haven't finished our work. Because of a lot of selfishness, right. love of pleasure, mm -hmm. love of money. Do you see our calling? Do you see what Christ is waiting for? It is you and I he's waiting for. He wants to finish this work in righteousness very rapidly. This could have been over already. Christ is not waiting for some kind of major event to transpire as some believe and have been taught. No, these events that need to take place, those unfulfilled prophecies that need to be fulfilled would have uh, been fulfilled already if we had done our job, our work. Notice, back to the screen. She says, the work has been retarded in doing its work by the selfish, because of selfish love of money, the selfish love of ease, and the unfitness of men to do a work that needs to be done. The angel that is to lighten the earth with his glory has waited for human instrumentalities through whom the light of heaven could shine and they thus cooperate to give in its sacred, solemn importance the message which is to decide the destiny of the world. But notice the churches are what? Not are awake. not awake. New life must enter into the churches. So God is waiting for whom? For the churches. For the churches. Which message did she refer to there as well? The message of the fourth angel. Yeah, the chapter 18. Go, go there. To chapter 18. Notice verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Notice now, the earth was lightened with his glory. That message has a particular work 
or messenger has a work to do. Number one, to reflect the character of or characteristics of Jesus in their lives. And then number two, to do what again? As we looked at this morning, to expose the light of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, just like the angel came, who came from the east, just like the magi who came from the east, announcing to the people, where is he who was born king of the Jews? Good news of salvation. That's our work. But notice now, what else? Verse 2, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen. And what else? Is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Here is a part of the message. The church is way far, too far behind from reflecting the glory, the character of Jesus Christ and the message that needs to be proclaimed in these last days so that the Gentiles, as Isaiah chapter 60 tells us, could come to the brightness of Jesus' glory so that they could see the light of Jesus in us. And as Paul says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 6, to give this knowledge of Jesus Christ, the light of the knowledge of the glory of, of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And we have, verse 7 of 2 Thessalonians, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we have this light. Where do we have this light? This treasure in earthen vessels that we need to impart to, to the world. We need to be more engaged. We are too selfish. That's what we just read there. Yeah. We are too preoccupied by material things. Mm -hmm. We have too much money, especially in the West. We are living a life of ease. Mm -hmm. And many of us do not know, do, do not understand what, what it means to live uh, on very little, very little or check, uh, from one paycheck to another. We don't know this. You know, when you travel, when you go to some third countries, especially in some parts of Africa, in, in Asia as well, people are hungry. They are more receptive to the truth of, of God, to the light of Jesus Christ, to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. You know, partly you know, because they don't have much, they rely on God for every meal, everything. They don't have uh, thousands of dollars in their bank's account. They rely on God. But that's correct. That we are like the Laodicean. We, we think that we have increased with goods and in need of nothing. Brothers and sisters, this is a solemn time that we are living. God is giving us another opportunity. God is merciful. God is very graceful unto us. He's holding back the winds of strife because He sees that I'm not ready, you're not ready, we are not ready, and He wants to give us a little bit more time. But probation is rapidly coming to an end. It's closing very rapidly. And as Jesus says, God wants to finish this work shortly, briefly, in a short amount of time, in righteousness. In the meanwhile, the message, part of the message that was given to us was to expose the man of sin who is also been making steps. You know, while we are far behind on what we're supposed to be doing, the man of sin is far ahead of us. As we looked at last time, notice with me, back to the screen, what it says there. From cnsnews.com, Pope says, migrants are on move to escape, what else? Wars, miseries caused by social injustice and climate change. So what's the reason why? Mm -hmm. According to the Pope, that we, ha we are seeing these uh, migrations throughout the whole world. Well, because of poverty, he says, miseries, social injustice, and what else? Climate change. 
So right there you could see behind this movement as we covered before in part one that what's really behind this migration there is history really repeating it itself to break up the nations as Rome was divided. And who is bringing these migrants or spreading these migrants throughout the nations of this world? It's none other than the papacy. Now, the words that I'd like you to focus here for a moment, back to the screen, screen is the word social injustices. Why do you think this origi originated? This is one of the teaching or doctrines of the papacy. Social justice. They've been using this a lot to show that they are for the poor. Quote, unquote, for the poor. But notice with me where this originated. Back to the screen. It says here, this is from Wikipedia. While the concept, social justice, while the concept of social justice can be traced through the theology of Augustine of uh, Hippo and uh, the philosophy of Thomas Paine, the term social justice became used explicitly from the 1840s by who? A Jesuit priest named uh, Luigi Taper Taperelli is typically credited with uh, coining the term. So where does this, this uh, so-called social justice come from? From the Jesuits. And this is what the papacy has been using to tell the leaders of the world, of this world, of many countries, to allow the migrants to, to come in because of quote-unquote social justice and climate change. And they have been pushing for this. His agents as well has been pushing for this. Notice with me also on the screen. From the Daily Caller. December 18, 2018, Algo says, Migrant caravan is a what? Is a startling example of what? Global warming. Former Vice President Al Gore said, The Central American migrant caravan seeking asylum in the U.S. is a recent startling example of global warming forcing people from their homes. People from all over the world are being forced to migrate because... The climate crisis is affecting their livelihood. The migrant caravan from Central America is a recent startling, startling example. Now, God is, uh, again, trying to protect His people, trying to help His people to be aware. This migration movement that's taking place, most of them, do you know which countries they are coming from? And their backgrounds, religious background, Catholic, Catholic yep. and Muslims. Now, Catholic Muslims, they are the same because the Muslim religion was created by the papacy. It was created by the papacy. They are the same. So what we are seeing here is the papacy putting his people in positions. So that when this Sunday law hit, it will be almost impossible for you and I to find a place to, you know, to hide. Only in the arm of Jesus Christ. They have the technologies and now they have the foot soldiers everywhere. And uh, some of these folks from these uh, Muslim countries, they are very cruel. They are very cruel. Back to your Bible now. Notice with me. So th the Bible says God is holding back the winds of strife. Let go, let's go to the book of Isaiah with me. Where are we going to? Bye. Isaiah chapter 11. Notice again what the Word of God says here. God wants us to be ready for what's coming, even if we, are, if we have to become a martyr for Him. Notice chapter 11, verse 12. The Bible says, And He shall set up an ensign for the what? For the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the which directions? Four corners. From the four corners of the earth. Now, whether these individuals or some in the, uh, individuals have died in the Lord or alive, God promised that He will gather His people, His elect. And as Revelation chapter 20 tells us, that some 
were crying, which was symbolic there, were crying, How long, O Lord? Mm -hmm. Holy and true, does that not avenge our blood? Yeah. And God said, Sleep for a little while until your fellow brethren, which shall, shall be killed as well, because we fought them, we cannot be made perfect. We looked at that text before. Notice another passage with me. Go to now to the book of Ezekiel. Go forward to the book of Ezekiel chapter 7. Let's begin in verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 7. And we'll begin in verse 1 of Ezekiel chapter 7. Again, notice what the, the prophet Ezekiel says. Verse 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Also, thou son of man, thus saith the Lord God unto the land of Israel, and end, what else? The end, the end is come. Upon which direction again? The four corners of the land. Again, these migrants are coming from which direction? The four corners of the earth as well. They are invading, spreading throughout the whole four corners. Again, it's like a military strategy. You're putting your people into place, right? You, before you do anything. And without the, your opponent or your enemy noticing what you're doing. This is exactly what the papacy has been doing. This is the reason why the Bible says the wise will understand. This is why we were told to study, to show ourselves approved unto God. And as we study and we see these things happening, God's people will recognize, mm -mm, this is not just people fleeing wars, crimes, or famines in their home countries. No, there is a strategic plan there by the enemy of souls to position himself against God's people because he knoweth, as Revelation chapter 12 says, that he has but a short time. Speaking of Satan, but remember Satan working behind not pagan Rome this time, but papal Rome, which is really a combination of pagan Rome as well. Notice with me. The Bible goes on to say, we are in chapter 7, verse, verse 2, verse 1. Well, we're in verse 2. Also, thou son of man, thus saith the Lord God unto the land of Israel, and end, the end is come upon the four corners of uh, the where? Of the land. Now is the end come upon thee, and I will send mine anger upon thee, and will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense upon thee all thine abomination. Notice with me. So God is telling us that we need to repent. We need to take seriously the work that He has been given and entrusted unto us to do in these last days. Notice, let's look at another passage. Daniel chapter 7 this time. Let's go to the book of Daniel chapter 7. Again, we'll begin in verse 1 as well, as we did for the book of Ezekiel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7 verse 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, what did he see? The four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. He saw what? War, strife, strife, commotions. Then he described the beast that he saw. Remember, we looked at that. The lion, and what else? The bear, bear. the leopard. And then that ferocious beast, which was Rome, and then the divided of Rome. Then he saw that little horn coming up as a result of the division of Rome. And then his focus was on that little horn. What that little horn was doing, had, what was doing, how that little horn was persecuting God's people. Notice with me, back to the screen. Dealing with this migrant movement and climate change again. We remember Sunday Law is behind this. From the Guardian, October 30th, 2018. The unseen what? Driver behind what? The migrant caravan. What's the, what's the driver? Oh, climate. climate change. If we were to translate this, the driver here is a Sunday Law. Do you get it? Yeah. The climate change. Notice, next one here. 
It says from the Huff Post, Trump's military response to migrant caravan foreshadows a dark long-term climate policy. Migration from Central America soared over the past decade amid droughts and violence. Climate change will only what? What's the word? Exacerbate. Exacerbate those. So climate change, as long as we have this problem of climate change, increase of natural disasters. In other words, they're saying that we going to be seeing more of the same. Unless, unless, da, 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 Sunday law. unless we legislate Sunday, which is the solution to the climate problem. Back to the screen again. Notice what it says there. From ENE -E News, Caravan provides a preview of climate what? Migrations, experts say. Global warming will compound the pressures dr driving migrants from poor, fragile countries. Do you see where we are? Again, the papacy is putting his foot soldiers. They, those are the foot soldiers. They have the technologies, right? They have the technologies. They also have the foot soldiers everywhere. And now when, when they go to a nation, they spread them. They, sp they spread them throughout the nation, especially where they know that God's commandment keeping peoples are. Notice, back to the screen again. It says here, from the Daily New Caller, Daily Caller News Foundation, the media puts a new spin on migrant caravan coverage. They fleeing, media says, global warming. Several media outlets have published stories linking the migrant caravan to global warming. Thousands of migrants from Central American countries, such as Honduras and Guatemala, are making their way through Mexico to the U.S. border to, the, to declare asylum. Those in the media looking for a global warming angle to the story found experts who say the migrant caravan is a preview of the waves of climate refugees that will come with more, what? More global, more global, global warming. Again, the issue for those nations who do not want to go along with this, who do not want to accept those migrants, who are putting national interests uh, above the migration movement, then they need to legislate Sunday then. You see that? Good. They need to legislate Sunday, then that would stop the global warming problem uh -huh. or the climate change problem. There are a few resistance, brothers and sisters. There are a few, I'll show you one of them. No, notice, back to the screen. From Cook's magazine. This is a Catholic magazine. It says, Italy's populist regime defies Pope Francis anew over immigration. So there are a few that are holding back. Hence, hold back the winds of strife. You see, not, not all of them, the governments of this world, are fully in agreement with taking those migrants. They are holding back True. to some degrees. Mm -hmm. and, and God wants you and I to see this, understand this, that this is our opportunity at the same time to go out into the highways and byways, pass out the book, Great Controversy, Steps to Christ, Witness to People. This is our time yeah. to accept the call like Isaiah says, here I am, send me. There's a work that needs to be done. God cannot and won't do or won't seal us until we do our part, brothers and sisters. God wants to finish this work. Notice, so the countries of this world are being pressured by the papacy to allow those migrants to come in. Notice another one here, back to the screen, from Rome reports, Colombian president and Pope discuss what? Venezuelan, Venezuelan migration. migration crisis and peace process. Here's another one. It says Swiss president talks nuclear disarmament and what else? Migration. And migration with, uh, with the Pope. One more. It says here, Pope releases World Day of Peace message. Notice carefully. 
This was December 26, 2018 from the, the Arlington Catholic Herald. In today's climate of mistrust, rejection and uh, what's the word? Yes. Nationalism. The world uh, urgently needs uh, peacemakers and politicians who protect and lovingly serve others. Pope Francis said, politicians and all citizens, he said, need to do what? We are firm that peace is based on respect for each person, whatever his or her background, on respect for the law and what else? The common and the common good. On respect for the environment entrusted to our care and for the richness of the moral tradition inherited from past generations. So in other words, they cannot fully implement and force the Sunday law without putting people in pos into strategically in position where, whereas they can spy on you or persecute you. That's what's taking place right now. Notice another one here from the from Rome reports. Pope Francis says political discourses that blame migrants for all evils are what? It's Unacceptable. In the text, Pope Francis denounces that corruption and other vices of politics bring disgrace to public life and threaten social harmony. The Pope asks that politics be understood as a service to the what? The common good. To, the common good. to the common good. So everything is about the common good. And as we discussed before, the movement taking place in this world, whether if it's uh, this uh, migration problem, the financial problems, social problems, environmental issues, wars and rumors of wars, are all leading us to one final crisis. And that's the Sunday law. Notice one more, back to the screen. It says here from Crooks Magazine, November 20, uh, 20th, 2018, Pope change, changes date of World Day for, of what? Migrants and refugees to September. Pope Francis has changed the date of the World Day of Migrants and Refugees to the, which day? Last, Last Sunday, Sunday of September. September. So we have a specific day of the year now, which is Sunday, dedicated. which is called the Day of the Migrant, dedicated <laughs> for the migrant. And which day is that? Sunday. Sunday. This, is, this is how he's bringing the whole world together. Again, as we read, go back to Daniel chapter 7. As we read last time, by way of review, Daniel says in verse 8, as uh, he saw the division of Rome, the fourth beast, then out of that Division came forth this little horn. In verse 8, he says, I consider the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the what? By the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man and a mouth speaking great things. But by this description there, in the latter part of this verse, Daniel is saying one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why he considered the, this power, this little horn, it's because he saw a religious leader at the head of it. Unlike Babylon, mm -hmm. you had uh, King Nebuchadnezzar and the others, and uh, the the. Mids and the Persians, you had Darius and uh, Alexander the Great with uh, Greece. And then pagan Rome, you, you had uh, the uh, emperors. Mm -hmm. And then now we come to this little horn. Daniel said, I consider that power. Even though in spite of the fact pagan Rome did persecute God's people. But Daniel saw in this power, this little horn power, a more dangerous fellow because it's a it's more deadly because it's a combination of church, church and, and state. state he brings the church he brings the state under its umbrella whereas during the the era of the red horse and even the era of the white horse which were the 
during the time of pagan Rome, the church was under severe persecution. And as long as the church and the state remained separate, the church was growing in righteousness. But then Satan used a different method. Let's have a power now that control both the church and the state. And when you have a power like that, that control both the church and the state, that means you can control the conscience. You control the conscience. And if you don't bow, you will perish. You'll be persecuted. And that power claim to be Christian. Remember, it was as a result of Constantine, the Black Horse era, bringing Christianity and paganism, paganism to, together gave birth to that power. So little by little, the church started to compromise. L the church started to compromise. And then finally we come to the era of Justinian ar around four, late 400 AD. As the empire was crumbling down, Justinian gave the seat power unto the papacy, great power unto the papacy. Thus, the pagan empire went down, the papacy comes up. That's the little horn Daniel was watching. Notice again uh, this passage here from S.N. Haskell. He says, In the distress caused by the numerous invasions of the barbarians, the bishop of the Roman diocese had acted well his part. When nations fell and emper emperors ceased to grant protection, men sought safety in the shadow of the where? Of the church. Which church is that? The Roman church daily, the power of the bishop increased and from the decaying ruins of ancient Rome, the papacy arose. This is the reason why, back to Revelation chapter 13 again. Where are we going to? Revelation 13. This is the reason why you find this language there. You have uh, this power there. Justinian gave uh, his seat in great authority. This is the reason why the Bible says again in Revelation chapter 13, it says in verse uh, 4, And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? He is a religious leader at the same time. He claims to represent Jesus Christ on earth. Can you make war against God? God? You see it? Can you make war against God? That would be blasphemy. They claim to occupy the seat of Jesus Christ. And many have been brainwashed to believe this. So therefore, those who have been brainwashed, who have been deceived by this power, they will be your enemies. They have been deceived. They would think that they are doing God a favor by pointing you out. Just like Paul or Saul. Right? Yes. They would think that they're doing God a favor by pointing you out. This is why Jesus says, the time will come when uh, you will be persecu persecuted by some who think that they are doing a favor for God. By rooting out the heretics. This is, this is where we're heading. And what? event uh, that's around the corner what's the final crisis there there it is back to the screen it says here know what sunday shopping at the american dream mega mall whenever it opens december 23rd 2018 this is the crisis this is where all of this migration movement is taking us to this final crisis the sunday law crisis which is right upon us what did sister white say a moment ago she says the reason why the angels are holding back were commanded to hold back the winds of strife is because there's a work to be done this is why jesus says let's go back to the book of john we looked at that passage last time go back to the book of john this is why jesus says you remember a message came to jesus 
warning him about Herod was seeking to, to kill him. Right. Trying to cause Jesus to stop working. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, tell that fox. How did he call Herod? Fox. Mm -hmm. That I have a work to do. Chapter 9 <laughs> of the book of John. The, the Bible says, notice verse 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither have this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the what? The works of God should be made manifest in him. How will the work of God be made manifest in others today? Through you, through me, through our witnesses. Notice, let's keep reading. Then Jesus says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when what? No man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the what again? The light of the, of the world. world. Again, as long as we are in this world, we cannot hide that light under a bushel. Amen? Amen. You have been received. Now it's time for you to... Give. To give. It is more blessing to what? To give, to give than to receive. We, we need to stop hoarding things. Amen? We need to stop hoarding information. We need first to apply it. That's part of the work. Apply it into our lives. Consecrate our lives to Jesus Christ. And then we impart this knowledge to others. Again, I encourage you. Wherever you go this week, put some books. If you don't have books to pass out, let me know. I'll give you some. And share them, spread them. Because we have a short time. We have but a short time. And God is waiting for us. If we want to hear those beautiful words, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. If, we, if you want to hear that, you must add soul unto your crown. You must add soul unto your crown. Think about yourself as I think about myself. Where were you before you accepted Jesus Christ? Before you finally reached out to the hand of grace? The hands that, have, that were nails for you and I. Where were you? How, what did He do for you? How is He working in your lives today? You want to help others to understand this. To help them to see the love of Jesus Christ. God is holding back the winds of strife. And He wants to send us in all the four corners of the earth. Go to Matthew chapter 28 with me. Jesus says, I have a work to do. Right? And what's that work? When should we work? While it is day. And what's that work? A work of saving souls. A work... As we read this morning, when Paul says that God has raised us, we read that in the book of Acts chapter 13, as a light so that we might be salvation unto the Gentiles unto the end of the world. We are in the book of Matthew chapter 28. As Jesus was getting ready to depart and the disciples were given their commission. Notice with me. Where are we now? Matthew, Matthew chapter 28. Notice what Jesus says to the disciples again. Verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, here's the commission, and teach all nations, baptizing them, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So as we take up, as we pick up, as we go about doing just that, who will be with us? Christ promised that He will go with us. We will not go into the world. We have not been sent into the world in our own strength, with our own message, 
It's a message of Jesus Christ. Notice back to the screen. Sister White says, Now is the time to work. Just now. There is not a moment to lose. All national, denominational, and uh, sectarian distinctions between rank and rank, between case and case, are what? Lost. Lost. The message is to be proclaimed in the highways and byways and hedges. Every human agent is merging his character under one or two heads, the prince of life and the prince of darkness. To those who receive Christ, he gives power to become loyal sons of God. The work is before us individually. Our moral identity cannot be submerged in any human being. We shall be called of God to do our work according to our several ability. Unto one, God has given a measure of faith. Unto another, a measure of faith. But that does not mean just because you have uh, your talent is different than mine. That does not mean that God has not called you to be a witness. God called each and every one of us to be workers for Him. Amen? Amen. To be workers for Him. To make a difference in the world. The world is facing judgment. The judgment of God is on the land. But at the same time, God is giving His people a window of opportunity. Again, as Revelation chapter 7 says, hold back the winds of strife because God's servant I have not been sealed yet. Why? It's not because God is missing something or it's not because God is late. It's not because God has more to do, but it's because we are retarded. We have retarded the work, as Sister Watts says. We are far behind when we should have been far ahead. Don't look at somebody else and say, well, if she does this or if he does that, then I'll, I'll do this. No. What if I'm looking for you to, to step up and you're looking for me to step up? So nobody's stepping up. Yeah. Yeah. We need to do our work, brothers and sisters. Let us, as Sister White says, distribute the book Great Controversy like wildfire until Jesus comes. Let's pray. Loving Father which art in heaven, we thank you for giving us this window of opportunity to continue to work for you. Help us to engage, help us not to get discouraged because we know that the enemy will try to discourage us. We pray, Father, that you would put people in our path and help us to shine for you. Help us to live for you so that our neighbors, wherever we go, they can see Christ in us so they can be attracted by our, by our conversation, our conduct. Father, we are far behind in what we, you have called us to do. We ask for forgiveness for retarding the work. We pray now that you would give us the boldness, that you would impart, that you would send your Holy Spirit, that you would send the heavenly angels to accompany us as we go forward into the vineyard to work for you. In Jesus' name, amen.